Hello fellow modelers, I prepared exciting project for you, especially if you are a Great War fan and love colorful airplanes. The Felix Tow was one of the first aircraft capable of landing on water more than once, and I chose kit made by Rodan in 72 scale. I must agree that some details are not sharp and there are many mole flashes, but this kit is the best one available at this particular scale. However, after some minor improvements, you can build a lovely and unique model from it. I purchased detail set that helps improve some details and as a bonus I got this lovely 3D printed Lewis machine guns made by Gaspatch models. There are not a lot of details in the interior, expect to seats and instrument panel. But for this problem I have a detail set which significantly improves it. I am gluing metal parts with a ordinary super glue. It is important to pay attention to all the details. One such detail is fuel tank, which can be tricky to shape and fit into the place. To make this task easier, you can use a rod or a round paintbrush handle to bend the round shape of the tanks. I prefer filling deep ejected pin marks with a super glue, which is more stable than Tamiya Party. The details help a lot. The next step is to paint it. It looks more like a ship than an airplane. I painted the base shade with an airbrush because the spray layer is nicely soft and uniform. Then I painted the rest of the details with a paintbrush because it's more precise. I downloaded the detail instruction manual from Wing and Wing's website. It works like a perfect documentation, although the manual is for a slightly larger scale, 32. It's a great that you can use it as a reference and inspiration. Primarily, it is tempting to make a similar details. So the first step is to include more internal construction from plastic profiles. Now I'm making box for maps and documentations. I use a spare resin mold runner. Another lovely detail is stairs for a fuselage gunner position. I use thin styrene boards which I cut to needy shapes. 
and the best is that this detail will be partially visible after completion. Another cool detail is Life Boy from LED Wire. However, I think the original was not made from LED. And in addition, many Louis machine gun magazines. I noticed in the documentation that there should be a third fuel tank, so I made it from plastic round profile. I printed maps on laser printer. I prefer laser because the printed layer is resilient against water or humidity, so you can use PVA glue without problems. Last but not least, I added seat belts from Edart and improved the wooden texture with the oil paints. In my opinion, it is a significant improvement against the kit standard, but it is shame that almost all will be hidden. Or I can remove fabric from the part of the fuselage and make the interior more visible. More work, but it will be interesting. There should be a small window for repairing or maintaining the engines during the flight. Or for my version it was also access entrance for a wing gun position. It looks pretty scary nowadays. I must admire the crew's bravery and the designer's craziness. When I removed the cover fabric texture, I had to make a new internal wood construction. I cut the residual parts and styrene bores to 1mm strips. I prefer to have a fuselage without wings for masking and painting, so I cut them out with a razor saw. The back of the fuselage has bad fitting, so I was forced to use a lot of party. I smoothed the first layer with a super glue, but I used the grey Tamiya for the final smooth result. Honestly, I do not know what glues used in Roden, but the wings are from three parts and do not have any connection on the reinforcement pins. I realize that the model will be fragile. But this is too much. Therefore, I highly recommend drilling thin holes into the wings and adding reinforcement pins. The best connection material is hypodermic needles. They are cheap and the metal tubes are strong. The same problem is with the elevator and the rudder. Another advantage is easier gluing after painting and easier geometric control. The top wingspan is 42 cm, so reinforcement is definitely necessary here. The next step is primer, which reveals imperfections on the surface.
I decided to transfer the wing nut wing surface details to my model, and I think these masking strips from OMask are perfect help. I'm scraping new lines according to strips with a razor saw. The lines make the front wooden texture more pronounced. Also, the bottom side of the airplane has flat and dull surface. You can bring more details, scribing more lines. I'm making all these details according to wing nut wings. The real aircraft has almost invisible lines, but they will look lovely on the model. Primarily, it looks more interesting than flat surface. The surface has a lot of large holes for wires, so I'm filling them with a super glue. It is good to attach the elevator with the wires. I used copper wires because they are more flexible than hypodermic needles. Engines are undoubtedly the best part of this kit. They have a splendid details and a lot of tiny parts. And the best is that these engines have no covers, so they are nicely exposed. The radiator has some details, but the detail set allows to make it much better. Primarily cool detail is the radiator mesh.
Nice metallic paints for paintbrushes are polishable alcoholic based Agama. The only disadvantage is that you cannot use any enamel wash on them. Therefore I use Citadel acrylic shade as a wash. I told you that these engines are lovely and they are in the kit, so you don't need any resin replacement. The propellers were painted grey and had metallic ends, but it depends on the plain version. This plane was a flying boat, so it doesn't have any landing gear. Therefore, for ground transportation they used the wooden trolley. The kid has it, but it's slightly simplified, so I opened the Blender 3D Ether and designed a new replacement part. It is essential to remove the metal rib from the old part and glue it on the construction. It helps with the part's position. By the way, the 3D printable files and many other improvements are available for my patrons. Ok, it's time for painting. The model will be very colorful, but I want to paint the model with a brown wooden shade first. You will see why. The next step is chipping varnish, which allows the removal of a top paint layer with a water. This kit version has only one color marking and it has vertical white dead strips on the fuselage. The most challenging part is obtaining the size and orientation of the strips. Therefore I cut precise strips from masking tape and rescale the manual to model size. The scheme in the correct scale is handy template. And another layer of a chipping varnish over. I mixed the red paint with a yellow to achieve a less bright red shade. Try to spray many soft layers, otherwise the paint in the thick wet layer can soak underneath the paper mask. Now the wings, it is simple, one solid shade over the whole surface, right? Actually not at all, you can make it more interesting by painting each rib or making them more pronounced. So I use a thin 0.6mm strips from O-Mask. Of course you can buy a strips from Tamiya, but the masking tape is on the roll and after unwinding is not precisely narrow and you must cut each strip separately. This way I make only one cut and have all strips in the same length. Also application is easier because the strips are nicely narrow. I am glad for this product because masking all the ribs was a nightmare, even so.
I sprayed the first layer more brightly, so I could paint darker shades over the masks. After unmasking, it creates a nice shading and primarily changes uniform dull surface. I repeated the same steps on the upper wing sides. Difficult was to apply strips in the same orientation as the bottom ones. The decals from the kit do not fit perfectly. I mean by that that the white circle is not in the center, so I use spraying mask for roundless. It is good to start spraying from lighter to darker shade, so the white first, then red and lastly dark blue. The white strip is very thin, so I rather cover the edges with a mask hole. It is liquid masking solution. The masking was tough and I didn't enjoy it at all. So let's change the mood with a more pleasant stuff and that is weathering. I sprayed on the fuselage chipping varnish, so now we can play with it. I am applying water on the surface which dilutes the base varnish, making the top paint layer more unstable. Now I am making soft scratches with a sharp wooden toothpick because you have a better control over the final outcome. Some schemes also have a red white strips on the bottom side, but I prefer a Rodan box art version with a dark wood shade. I am so glad that I made new metal connection pins for wings. Now assembling is easy like Lego. I was slightly skeptical about the wing struts fitting, primarily with two engines and 14 vertical wing struts, but in the end it was not so horrible. I was only forced to modify the two middle ones. I am imitating wooden texture with a highly diluted oil paint. I used only two decals from the kit, the plain registration number. I am fixing the result with a matte varnish, 
it will make the paint job more resilient, but primarily fix chipping varnish. So you cannot remove more paint after the step. I'm making details more pronounced of a highly diluted oil paint. It makes them darker. And when the paint is partially dry, try to remove the excess paint or smooth the result with an enamel thinner. And more shading on the wings. I'm applying thinner first and then oil paint. The thinner allows the paint to spread and blend more easily. I use yellow, dark brown and olive green paints. A lovely weathering effect is accumulated oil stains under the engines. I am making abraded paint or sketches of a soft sandpaper and more shading with oil paints. Ok, I painted the most of the parts, so it's time for another nightmare and that is rigging. I have a bad feeling about this step, because there are many wires and some are double. I use rigging made by Ushi. This fiber is super flexible, so you don't need to worry that you accidentally break them. It is also easy to glue it with a super glue. I cannot imagine making wires from fishing lines or tangent plastic fibers from sprue. The diagonal rigging is double, so I drilled small holes into the wings for better fitting. This is crucial step. I must glue the upper wing to thin fragile struts. I glue the engines first and then position and glue each strut separately. I used a lot of super glue, but the construction is weak even so. I must be very gentle with the handling. I thought a second about turnbuckles, but I will make them on smaller, more straightforward model. Last but not least, I need a few more details. In the kit are usable lowest gums, but this 3D printed from Gaspatch models are awesome.
Now when I have rigging and details done, I can finish the crazy control cables for elevator and rudder. The control cables have V shape, so the easy solution is to make one long wire that goes from the fuselage to the elevator and then glue the second wire into the middle. Ok, that was interesting. We decided to make a flying boat model in the local modeling club for our next year competition. My first idea was to make a legendary Catalina model, but when I discovered this Rodan kit, I couldn't resist. It was a laugh at the first sight, but on the other hand, it was a hell of project, which took me more or less 6 months to finish. Primarily, I had a leak of patience, so I made easier models in the meantime. In any case, I'm glad I could finish it and show you the process. I hope you like the result just a little bit. Thank you for watching and see you next time.